several years now, uh, Fitness Business Canada and um, Canada Pro and FIC long have advocated for a Canadian health club report. And thanks to their partnership, we're very excited. On behalf of the we're very excited to have released the first ever report in December last year. And I just want to give a special thanks to uh, Dave, uh, Dave Party with Orange Theory and Fitness for sponsoring the publication as well. And really, without it being a collaborative effort, we may not have been able to publish the first ever report. So uh, just so you can see a tangible print copy of the report, um, the report itself is about 40 pages long, and it's uh, divided into several sections. Uh, the first part of the report is a good lengthy outlook provided by the Longwell family on the health club industry in, in, in Canada, focusing on lifestyle indicators and also the health of, of Canadians. Then also thanks to the contributions of uh, Tricia and Dave, we have a very great, uh, good section on the legislative review in Canada, as well as looking at the health club industry in terms of investment. Then also included was a snapshot of fitness professional survey results by a Can Hit Pro survey that was conducted last year. So for about 30 years, we've had an annual industry data survey um, that results in profiles of success that looks at all these key financial and club operations and the benchmarks. And uh, of those 100 or so clubs that participate, even though every club operator worldwide is welcome to participate, about 80 to 85 percent typically are North American clubs, and of that segment, most of them are U.S. club operators. So we really needed uh, an individual survey that kind of gathered these key performance indicators, these benchmarks of membership, uh, traffic, revenue, retention, specifically for Canadian clubs. And thanks to the 57 club operators representing 170 facilities, we were able to gather data that was that could at least provide a snapshot of how some Canadian clubs are performing. So in all, we gathered about 13 different performance metrics. Here is just a sample of, of four. And we broke up the data by different club types. So this is just a, a segment uh, representing the fitness-only multi-purpose and studio clubs. Looking at this data, usually in profiles, we have us uh, uh, results for fitness only and multi-purpose clubs. This is kind of consistent with what we've seen in profiles. Uh, multi-purpose clubs, they generally um, produce larger uh, sales volume overall. They're typically larger, they offer more non-use off offerings, uh, being often being a sport or racket or athletic club. They just have more programs, um, you know, personal training, sports instruction lessons, uh, pools and aquatics. And so they typically generate more revenue, and a lot of a slightly larger portion comes from non-use revenue too. Um, and also consistent with profiles, the rate of member retention tends to be a, a little better than the uh, fitness-only clubs. We didn't have enough of a sample size for studio from studios to come uh, across a rate of, of retention to be able to derive a retention rate. But hopefully, when we conduct the survey again, we'll be able to to find a statistic for that. Another segment of breakouts that we were able, able to look at, clubs that are part of a chain versus independent clubs. And interestingly, this was, uh, their performance uh, benchmarks were, were a little more comparable than what we normally see in profiles of success. Usually in profiles of success, a lot of the independent club operators are larger clubs, um, typically multi-purpose clubs. So they generate a little more revenue, um, more than clubs that are part of the chain. Here we see their, their revenue is somewhat comparable um, when we compare with, with profiles. Uh, what is a little bit uh, different too in this segment when we compare it to profiles of success clubs that participate is that non dues revenue in clubs that are part of uh, a chain, they actually generate a slightly larger segment of their total revenue from non dues offerings. So um, hopefully in, in, in the years to come we conduct the survey and we can track how there may be any differences or dis discrepancies across each individual segment. And just because we want to continue tracking these uh, performance results, we are inviting the Canadian clubs to participate in the uh, industry data survey. It is a longer survey than the Canadian Health Club survey. It's a little bit of an investment of time to participate, but um, if we can get, you know, at the very minimum, 15 club operators to participate, we'll be able to continue tracking results for this year. But however, in 2015, we are kind of exploring the possibility of doing the Canadian Health Club survey again. It's a little more condensed. It usually takes about 20 minutes to complete. 
but we'd like to keep the uh, IDS industry data survey open to Canadian club operators too because you'll have a little bit more in-depth analysis even though it's a little bit more of a time investment. We're able to get uh, profit center data, so uh, those benchmarks having to do with various non-use programs, not just personal training, small group training, if you have a pool, aquatics, racket, food and beverage, various profit centers that um, expands upon what we were able to provide for the Canadian Health Club survey. So for additional details on how to participate, you can go to versa.org slash research. We've talked about as an industry association that we are really a great industry association until we have research and quite honestly it's a big undertaking. I also have to thank Fitness Business Canada uh, who was very instrumental in helping put a lot of this together and, and working together we've been able now to get some benchmarking and, and some statistics which interestingly we are different than the United States. Uh, you know, uh, the Canadian market is different. Oftentimes we just look at the U.S. market and think it's the same and we're not. And the more we can do to see which way we're trending and, and the opportunities, I, I think it will be very good for people who are making investments in our industry or making decisions about what direction to take their business. Uh, this, is, uh, this is very good for us. So thank you very much. I also, if you haven't purchased a copy of it, I would in, encourage you to go on the ERSA website and, and download a copy. How much are they? It's uh, $69.95 for members, $129.95 for members. $69.95 for members, and I'm sure you're all members, and it would be, uh, it would be a very good investment for you.